Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Prestige Pawnbrokers is in a league of its own. You've got £300,000 worth. I think we need some champagne. Where the well heels worldly goods. That's impressive. Are turned into hard cash. I'm in the business of making money, and it doesn't matter if it's cars, boats, whatever it is, I want it. In the heart of Hatton Garden and the wealthy suburbs of Surrey, their three shops deal in high end goods. They're Chanel bags, goodness sake. With top end prices. Ideally, we would like to get 25 grand. Blimey. This time, impressions <laughs> and high end handbags. Oh, that's so gorgeous. It's my little uh, piece of candy. <laughs> a sparkling past to fund a bodybuilding future. I look, look like a monster. <laughs> and his boss, James. Sounds phenomenal, doesn't it? <laughs> in the market for a new boy's toy. You can't be weaned off on medication, can you? <laughs> Welcome to the world of posh porn. Over 2,000 pawnbrokers operating in the UK. Hello. Hi. Servicing asset rich clients. So the first is a tab or a watch. Okay. Looking for alternative ways to release their cash. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Jet setting pawnbroker James Constantino is accustomed to closing big money deals all around the world. I'm happy to present you with an offer of 100 grand. Whoa! <laughs> a massive part of the business is set up to get global clients and it's really important that we are able to travel around the world to look at some of these high-end assets. We can offer you £15,000. What? It never ceases to amaze me what we get offered. We've had whales, vomit, fighter jets and even a pair of Queen Victoria's knickers. It's another day at head office in London's Hatton Garden for boss James and long-standing assistant Joe. Do you like my new shoes? Yeah, have you been round raiding Dr. Bernardo's? <laughs> James, these are my new shoes. I love them. Well, they're really smart. Yeah, I can walk really fast in these. Oh, can you? Yeah. I love them, yeah. I think they're a bit young because they're so bright. Um, young? I wouldn't have said young, no. They look like a couple of pita breads. <laughs> <laughs> they're terrible. <laughs> Accessories can mean big money. Today, designer handbag expert Claudia has had an inquiry from overseas. Well, this is an email that I've just had through from a, an American lady who lives in Germany. She's got some really unique handbags that she'd like to sell. I haven't had a, a, a customer from abroad before, so it's quite interesting. Handbags started off as a little gimmicky sideline for us, and we weren't really taking it that seriously. But over the years, it's grown to a massive part of the business. There's some nice items here. There's like a Pinkie Python handbag. It's gorgeous, it's so different and unusual. Would suit my character, fruitful and bright. <laughs> she sounds really interesting, this lady. I'm really kind of excited to even speak to her just to see what her story is, really. I'm sort of, you know, hoping that this one could, uh, could make me fly out to Hamburg and have a look. Over in Germany. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? C'est moi. 44-year-old Corrine relocated to Hamburg from New York three years ago. Peanuts, Erdnüsse, Flauschi. When I moved to this place, all these amazing songbirds started coming out, greeting me. Flauschi, I call the Buddha Jay because he's so round and fluffy. I always say Flauschi. So he'll do eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
winning my first competitions at seven, playing the piano on television with eight, performing as a soloist in Europe with a big orchestra by the time I was 10. Started having fun for the first time in my life in my 20s. So Vogue. I really did live a most privileged life in New York. I feel very great Gatsby. When she lived in New York, Corrine mixed with high society movers and shakers. My parents growing up hosted the most incredible parties. They were legendary. Everyone was there from United Nations ambassadors to European princes and princesses and whatnot. This I wore to the Met Opera to walk the red carpet, where half of Hollywood was also present. It's like the Oscars all the time. During Corrine's mid-30s, her glamorous lifestyle stopped when her mother became ill. She completely derailed with a very aggressive dementia, Alzheimer. After a number of years of illness, Corrine's mother died in America, leaving her with extensive medical bills. A uh, good one and a half million US dollars, so basically a million sterling. I still owe about 30,000 sterling in medical costs. It's really hard to know that this is still hanging over my head. Corrine's hoping that selling her collection of nine designer bags will help pay off some of the debts. This one here is a very special Chanel. It was found for me by a special lady who actually was the personal shopper for Lady Diana. And only three were made in the world. I ended up spending a good 4,000 pounds on it. So this is a chrome hearts bag. No comment what I paid for this. Corrine wants between three to 4,000 pounds for the bags. I'm really, really hoping that the bags will work their magic and everything relating to my mother can rest in peace. Over the last six years, James has dealt with hundreds of vehicles. This is what it's all about. And has found a way to test drive most of them. I have some of it. His right-hand woman, Jo, prefers to take things a little slower. Today, James has had a new four-wheeled inquiry. Here, Joe, have a look at this. Just come in, a little Porsche. A Lovely, little Porsche. well, an average size Porsche, but look at it. It's nice, isn't it? It's been done up to the nines. The owner's an absolute fanatic and uh, he's looking to sell it. So uh, I want to get down there and have another, another little go at this one. That's an old type, isn't it? No, what it is, it's an 80s one, but it's been done in a retro style, so he's done it in a sort of 70s colour, and he's looking for £90,000, it's a lot of money. Wow. But it's, uh, it's been, he's spent a fortune on it. I mean, everything has been done to this thing. It's a one-off, you can't really get another one like it, so... Right. They look a little bit like they're smiling at the front. OK. Yeah, well, you'll enjoy that, won't you? You really will. I will, I'll enjoy that day That's out. It's a big lump of money, though. Yeah. Massive, isn't it? It's a big lump of car. I worry a lot about James's decision-making when it comes to shiny motors. Yeah, I'm always concerned that he's going to do this random purchase and be ruled by his heart, and I'm like, no, please. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. Been in long? No, not really. The Porsche 911 belongs to brothers Tony and Dan. Um, yeah, working with Dan, it's uh, it's cool. We get on. We you know we don't get on each other's nerves. And if we do, we head off to a <laughs> call home. Yeah, he goes home, or <laughs> I storm off. But it's, it's, it doesn't happen very often. Yeah, no, we're two peas from the same pod, really. So we get along pretty well. Yeah, but really? I'm, the, I'm the oldest, so I'm, I'm the governor. Yeah, well, Dad still thinks he's the governor. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the way the problems come from. <laughs> All right, boys. I was the big boss for ages, and I built all this empire and give it to my sons. <laughs> it's all theirs now. I don't do nothing. 
I'll get Joe eating. The family have run their storage facility empire for four years after swapping city life for the Surrey countryside. Yeah, the whole site's ours. So we've developed it uh, to what it is now. It was a, a lot of hard work. As you come out of London a bit, things do slow down a bit. London's so hectic now. Yeah, yeah working down here is so much more tranquil. It's just a complete change of environment and lifestyle. The hardest thing we've got to deal with is, is my dad, <laughs> isn't it? Now Tony and Dan have their eyes on starting a sideline business, refurbishing their favourite cars. This is uh, an original Pulse, 1982, 911 SC. This is exactly what we're looking for. It can easily be changed and modified. What I'd like to do with it, do a black version of that. It's just a mean-looking little car. What I'd need... Uh, to begin with, is at least 30,000 for your specialist tools, your ramps, lifts, and obviously that money is tied up in, in the car. They've completely stripped and refitted an old Porsche, using original parts to create a shiny new bespoke vehicle. There was lots of ups and downs, there was some, there was some change of, of plans and stuff like that along the way that you get with a project like this, but I think, all in all, the finished product, it's definitely worth the wait. If James can get me in the region of 85,000, then that's going to release some money, move the business along. Hopefully, this will do all the talking, you know? That's the plan. But will James be able to find a buyer for the one-off Porsche and help them get their fledgling business off the ground? For the past six years, pawn shop boss James has been involved in deals worth millions. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? This uh, watch which belongs to Elvis Presley. I've got a Louis Vuitton bag, um, a Gucci bag. We've got to be able to sell it. I think what drives James every day is the idea of making money. It's that simple for him. Well, cheer me up. Let me see what's in the bank. If money's being made and James is happy, then that energy and that happiness filters down to all of us. You know the rolled-up Banksy? Yeah. In the big, long tube? Sold it. I know you did. Oh, you know about that, yeah. do you? Yeah. All right, you don't know everything. I said you? well done to you. I congratulate you, cos you actually did that one yourself. Yeah, but don't you issue any sort of certificates or anything? We get you a little badge. Yeah, a little rosette or something would be nice. Yeah, you thanks. are the greatest, yeah? Yeah, cheers. The business now stretches across three branches. In Richmond, new staff member Delith specialises in jewellery and has just received an unusual collection. I'd say that's pretty bling. It's very unusual design. Amazing, really. It's almost like a sculpture. And now it's stuck. There. There are so many pieces here in different styles and different designs. This one's quite unusual. Big clashing colours. Huge ring. That's a really big look. Somebody that wants to be noticed, that one. The jewellery belongs to 39-year-old Brazilian bodybuilder, Danny. All right, let's go. One, head up. Two. I train at least six times a week, twice a day. I train from 9 to 12. It's hard, but I, I really enjoy it. A couple of years ago, Danny split up with her partner of 13 years. I met my ex when I was 24. I met here in London. I was on a party with some friends. He's a banker. He was very wealthy. So I met him and after some months we moved together. He used to shopping a lot. Haute couture dresses, all the big names. That's a nice dress, huh? This is very glamorous. I used to spend like 35, 40 thousand dollars and one day shopping. Park. When she's not pumping iron, Danny lives with her sister in London and works as a personal shopper. That's nice. That's from our new collection. OK, that's great. She might like this one. Oh, I love personal shopping. This is for me, like, it's double the pleasure. So I can buy and I can make other people happy. You know, it's, it's great. And you have really, really nice stuff here. I love it. Now, with her focus on bodybuilding, Danny is preparing for her first contest. 
to be a bodybuilder like cast a lot, you know, all the supplements and all the stuff you need for the competition, you know. I need the extensions. I do. Oh, no, look, look, at the look, look, I look, look like a monster. <laughs> Your body is amazing. Oh God, such a big ass. You need makeup, you need your hair done, you need your spray tan, shoes, and the bikini, a really good one, can go to like 700 pounds, so. The bikini looks good, eh? To get the cash she needs, Danny wants to sell 24 pieces of jewelry from her old life. I'm gonna sell everything. I don't want anything. It doesn't mean anything. I need the money. I can't believe it. I'm shocked. I need at least 4,000 pounds, you know, because I have to get to the show and I have to pay my bills. To be a bodybuilder, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of money, so it's not easy. With bills and the competition to pay for, will there be any value to the unusual jewellery? This is the way I like it. Hatton Garden Branch, James has got another type of Brazilian to contend with. James, do you want my Brazil nuts? I'm in a relationship. <laughs> Very funny. No, you, you like these, don't you? I don't like them. They're all like you, aren't you? Bring them in your sweaty little paws. <laughs> They're not sweaty. That's what you get. Five years of loyal service. Five hundred miles away, handbag expert Claudia has just touched down in Hamburg. She's on her way to seek socialite Kareen and her designer collection. It was my first overseas trip uh, to go and see a client, and uh, there was a little bit of pressure put on there because obviously I wanted it to go well. She's got some amazing handbags that um, I can't wait to go and see, and uh, yeah, I think it'll be worth my trip. They are pretty unique and special. Depending on how many of the bags, about three to four thousand pounds would be great. I am just keeping everything crossed, even the eyes. Hello. Oh, Hello. Welcome to Hamburg. Thank you. Wow, oh you're, you're stunning. <laughs> Look at this place, it's beautiful. Where would you like me to sit? So I think you get the ultimate world's most comfortable chair, Thank you. and it swivels. <gasps> oh, gosh. so you can do a whole James Bond number here. <laughs> so here's the treasure chest. Oh, so my! I would say to start with my personal favorite. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would part with it. I think it's only made once. Okay. At least that is what you know. Berkdorf Goodman told me in New York. Okay. Wow, I'm not seeing one like this actually. That's gorgeous, isn't it? This is my most iconic, uh, unique bag, I would say. This is the This is the Lady Di bag, right? She actually had been the personal shopper for the Princess of Hearts, for Lady Diana, wow. in Paris, when Lady Diana shopped at Chanel. Oh, there's my favorite one. <laughs> it actually, it's actually smaller than I expected it to be. It looks bigger in the images. And it's Python, right? Oh, that's so gorgeous. Sometimes when I'm dealing with all these bags, it's so difficult to not take them all home. <laughs> and it's my little um, piece of candy. <laughs> yeah, it does. It looks like a sweet, doesn't it? Yeah, you want to bite like into it, salad. right? <laughs> and so I believe it's oh. a one of a kind from Zach Posen. That is beautiful. I've never <gasps> seen such a delicate one. chain as well, isn't it? This is stunning. I wouldn't mind this for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can pull off any bag. And with your, the black you're wearing? That's the problem. Yeah, they always go with everything, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> and that I never wore. Wow, it's like it's brand new. Oh, wow. You've got a really nice collection here. I'm jealous. I'm going to need a little bit of time to go through every individual bag a little bit more thoroughly. And then, yeah, we'll have a chat afterwards and see what we can do. Of course. These bags are outstanding. I mean, they really are gorgeous. Every single one of them. Um, this cute deal, which I absolutely love. I think it's gorgeous. They're in amazing condition. These are unique pieces, so it's really difficult to put a price on them. 
Claudia will now have to decide if the unique bags are worth the three to four thousand pounds that Corinne is seeking. There's probably nothing that we wouldn't really consider. It looks like from science fiction movie. We would absolutely look at anything of value. There's a 70 years old bottle of Evian water. Would you be interested? Not really thirsty. No? So we're not interested then? That is true. Almost. I can't think of anything we wouldn't look at. So if it's Evian and it's 70 years old, it's probably got some value. What is the benefit of it being 70 years old? It's not fine wine. <laughs> In Weybridge, James has recently appointed Helen as branch manager. And today, she's dealing with another liquid asset. Hi, hello. Hi. How can um, I help? I've got some wine. Right. Okay. It's uh, a Chateau Lafitte, 2001. OK. What are you looking to do? Are you looking to sell or to loan against it? No, I, I want to sell it. To sell it? Absolutely. OK. If I pop out and have a little look... Yeah, sure. Thank you. I haven't actually opened it. OK. So, uh, no doubt you'll want to look at it. And I've got a certificate there from Lathwaite's. OK. Proving that I bought two cases. Right. What are you looking for for the wine? Well, I need to buy a new Learjet. OK. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, what we'll do, if it's OK with you, we'll receipt the wine for you. OK. We'll do our research um, and then we'll come back to you with an offer. OK. And uh, hopefully we'll get you where you need to be. All right, Helen, that's okay. great. Thank you Lovely very much. Lovely to meet you. OK, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, well, she was a very nice lady, wasn't she? I'm not sure I'm going to get the money for the Learjet, though. <laughs> The vintage Chateau Lafitte belongs to wine enthusiast Nigel from Berkshire. I don't need any excuse to drink any wine at all. Bloody hell, that was good. You can have wine at any time. Yeah, I got it in. <laughs> I think probably the best one I bought was uh, a Chateau Petrus, probably the most expensive wine that you can buy. I shall drink it soon. Where's the ball? Come on, go and get the ball. At 69, he has two sons at university and is now semi-retired. You must be getting hungry too. Here, Maya, for someone who's not keen on dogs. Yeah, I've grown very fond of her, actually. Where's the squirrel? My boys did well in their exams, you see. They said, can we have a dog, can we have a dog? I wasn't keen on it. She's going to probably kill me one day, this thing. Here. Go on, then. Nigel developed a passion for the grape when he bought property on the west coast of France. Aren't you interested in the photos? <laughs> we purchased this in April 99, and I loved it. It was a small apartment, uh, had fabulous beaches. We had some fabulous times there. I felt that whilst I was in that part of the world, I should try and look for the best wines I could possibly afford. I, I just had an interest in it, how it was produced and where it was made, and now I don't store it, I drink it. Two glasses a night, or three. But I do like a nut or a bit of cheese. She only eats lobster. In 2001, Nigel pre-ordered two cases of Chateau Lafitte for £450 a case, straight from the winery. Two years later, it was delivered. I'd forgotten nearly about it, and then there's a knock on the office door and there's a delivery bloke with two cases of wine. You couldn't possibly squeeze one bottle out for your birthday party, could you? <laughs> I've been trying that for the past five years. <laughs> you know, I think I've got to go. I've got a lot to do today. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> in Harrods wine store downstairs, their highly prized chateaus are in an air-controlled room. I keep mine under the sink. Nigel has already accessed his sink cellar and opened one of the cases of wine. I've had the pleasure of having it. It's been great fun, um, but I've been very lucky to have tried it. But now he's keen to cash in on the remaining case of six bottles. The main reason I want to sell it is I've got two boys at university. The university fees are horrendous, so they'll come out with something like a £40,000 debt each. Here I am sitting on a couple of thousand pounds worth of wine, which I don't think is quite fair, really. So whatever price I can get for this will go towards our university fees. They're obviously going to do their research on it, but I think the minimum I accept is uh, about uh, roughly £3,000. Nigel is hoping the wine is now worth over six times what he paid for it, but will Helen agree? The 
pawn shop sees a steady stream of clients hoping to turn their precious metals into hard cash. I don't know if that's silver or white gold. I think it might be silver. We could search that out if you're not a problem. Yeah. What would you like to do? Pawn it or, or sell it? No, sell it. I don't really ask why my clients need the money, but it has been for dental fees, school fees, a divorce lies, almost anything. 60, 80, 90, madam. At the Richmond branch, gemologist Delith and branch manager Monica have been set the task of appraising the jewellery collection belonging to bodybuilder Danny. Monica, this is the jewellery I was telling you about that came in so quite a few pieces here. There's 11 different rings. Kind of unusual shapes. Mm. Some of it's really unusual. It's all the same brand with a couple of exceptions. It's um, a company from the Lebanon. The fact that the jewellery is Lebanese doesn't really make a difference from the appraisal point of view. It's more a case of assessing the stones as you would approach any other valuation. It's exactly the same process. This is a lovely ring. I think somebody would love that. Mm. Just needs um, a bit of a polish up. Unfortunately, this one, in the same style, a lot of the diamonds, are, there's a couple missing. Some of them are broken and some of the pink sapphires are broken. So unfortunately, that one's just going to be the cost of the metal. The pieces with the coloured stones, these black diamonds and these irradiated blue diamonds, unfortunately, don't have a massive value. They're great for the designer to make something different, but there's not a huge value in those. The one thing that does stand out is this lovely pear-shaped diamond. I like it. It's beautiful. I think it's a the, really... mo the most from everything. One thing is it's a, it's a big diamond, which I've calculated to be around two carats in size. So there's a, um, a reasonable amount of value in there. And the other thing about that one is because it's relatively plain, it will appeal to more people. So there's more chance of selling something like that. Whereas some of these more unusual things have a, a smaller, more limited market because yeah. and you um, cannot recycle. you're relying on people's taste. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. With regard to the resale of some of those items, I'm not really sure. I think some people will really love them, and because they are completely different in the UK market, they might be really, really popular. On the other hand, they might be a little bit more difficult to sell. I don't know. Boss James doesn't mind special items with a limited market. He's on his way to test drive a one-of-a-kind Porsche. I'm off to see uh, Tony today. Uh, we'll be taking a look at some of his stock. He's got a 911, an early 80s car that he's uh, completely renovated. It's done in a retro style. It looks the business in the pictures. He's looking for £90,000 for this car. I mean, it's not an easy one for us because it's not a standard bit of kit. And as such, you can't put it in your local paper and expect to sell it. And that's where I come in, and hopefully I can bring someone to the table. Brothers Tony and Dan need at least £30,000 to get their business of creating bespoke Porsches up and running. It'll be a first stepping stone in the right direction. Yeah, the end result is absolutely fantastic. And, uh, but to get them like this, you need money, and hopefully James is the, uh, is the link we need to, to get it for us. Who is? James, how are you doing? Tony. Hi, nice how are you? This is one of your bad boys, is it? Yeah, it certainly is, mate. The idea is to make them it, like into a car that you, you never, you don't see them on the road. Yeah, no, I was going to say you don't really see many of those poodling around, do you? Yeah. All road legal, or if you want to have a bit of fun, take it to the track and hold on tight. <laughs> we always like a bit of fun. Yeah. Where's the car in question? I'll show you. It's just in here. It's just in here. Yeah, it's nice, that though. Yeah, it's lovely. No, it's um, fantastic. It's, uh, it's definitely uh, a star of the show. Mid-80s, uh, 911, totally stripped back down to the, to the uh, bare minimum. It's based, the look, on a 74 3-litre RSR race car. When you see it in the flesh, I mean, it really is the business, isn't it? You're not going to see anything like this on the road. No. Oh, well, I mean, it looks absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it's a lovely day out there. What's the chances of us uh, taking it around the block? Well, I think if you've uh, got the balls to take it out, I think we'll, uh, we'll give it a bash. The sound of that Porsche was absolutely incredible. It made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. All right, mate? Yeah, lovely. Here she is. Good luck. Cheers. Oh, right, here we go. 
I absolutely love what I do. I enjoy coming to work and I enjoy playing with these high-end assets. Sounds phenomenal, doesn't it? <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh, that is the nuts. <laughs> Get a few looks from uh, cyclists and people walking their dogs. Yeah. They but don't really count, though, do they? Nah. Dog walkers and cyclists. Nah. So last season. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Up to the, the fort and give it the beans, there's all flames coming out of the back. Oh, it's, it's like Mad Max. <laughs> I've seen a turtle jumping on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> there were times out there when I wanted to put the pedal to the metal, and uh, I had to rein it in a little bit. You just don't get bored of it, do you? You can't help it, can you? <laughs> it's like a disease. It's a disease, it's like... You can't be weaned off on medication, can you? <laughs> No graceful way out, oh. unfortunately. Whew. Enjoy. There's definitely an art in getting out of there. There is, mate. All right, well, look, I'll get back to the office. I'll do some work on the numbers and a bit more research, and I'll come back to you if that's all right. Sounds great. Cheers for today, Thank you very much, James. Cheers. Thanks. See you Thanks. later. Thanks Bye. very much. Great stuff. In Weybridge, Helen's conducting some research of her own. Lawrence, come and have a little look at this. An inquiry Ooh, I've got. Something some exciting. Wine. Oh, wine. Have you dealt with the wine before? Yes, I have. You have? Yeah. Any advice? Because I'm pretty new well, to this. Well, what I usually but... do with wine is actually I email it to somebody else to do okay. and pretend I never receive the email. And then shred the... And the, then shred. The evidence. And then shred the evidence. Right. James is a really great entrepreneur and obviously he's in the business to make money. So there is that pressure that obviously you want to do your best for James. First thing you want to do is actually work out if the wine's worth anything. So let's click on the one that you want. If you look at that, it's gone right up. So it sort of peaked in 2011. Yeah. It's difficult. I'll tell you what I might do. Go and speak to Eric. I'll just read off the list you've got and just yeah. say if it's of interest, because he will know straight away. <laughs> Good afternoon, Grant speaking. How can I help? Dealing with wine can be notoriously difficult. It's all about the chateau, the vintage, and the condition. If you don't get those three things right, you can be in a lot of trouble. Helen's heading out for a second opinion from wine expert Eric. We need to have the wine verified to confirm that it is what it says it is. Um, obviously, um, Nigel has given us the invoice, but anything could be in the box. And Nigel's looking for three grand for the wine. Um, I've done a bit of research online. You know, this is an expensive wine. Um, so, but we'll, we'll see what, what we can get for him. Hi, Helen, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Very well indeed, thank good. you. Good, nice to see you. Good to see you too, good to see you too. So the Chateau Lafitte has come in. Should I crack that open? Yeah, yeah, bit? definitely. I'm you... just saying, Mark is on the outside, already looking quite good. Brilliant. The most I've paid for a bottle of wine is about £20, and that's, that's an expensive bottle of wine. There we are. Excellent. So it looks perfectly intact and all good. Let's just get out one of these bottles and just check. And there we go. Chateau Lafitte, Rothschild, 2001. So one of the key things you always want to look at is the, le the level yeah. within the bottle. And we, we call it the ullage, essentially. And the better it's been stormed, the less you're going to have of it. So in some wines, uh, if they're not been well kept, the ullage goes right down. And the problem with that, of course, is if it goes down, it means you've got more air in here. So there's more chance of the wine spoiling. So the mere fact that it's right at the top means it's, it's going to be spot on. So it's possibly the most important fact when you're looking at a wine to determine what the quality is um, without actually opening the cork. I think you've got you know, terrific wine here. 2001 was a very good vintage. Unfortunately, it was a little bit overshadowed by 2000, which was a phenomenal vintage. Okay. Personally, I'll drink it. How it's intended. Exactly that, <laughs> yeah. There we go. Thank you, uh, Eric. Lovely to see you. Great to see and you I'll too. I'll be in touch with you. Fantastic. To the client. The wine is a decent vintage, but is it good enough to get Nigel the three thousand pounds he's looking for? In Hamburg, Claudia is appraising a collection of rare designer handbags belonging to New York socialite 
Kareen. I measure the bags because um, all styles come in different sizes and it's always nice to know which model and which um, size you're pricing. Corrine is hoping to raise between three to four thousand pounds, which will allow her to pay some of her mother's medical bills from America. I'm a little nervous, of course. I'm really keeping my fingers and toes crossed that the three to four thousand pounds is feasible. They are unique pieces, and in some ways it's a good thing because you've got a unique piece and it's exclusive, but in, in other ways, when it comes to second-hand selling, these items aren't for the mass market at all. After a complete inspection and with a plane to catch, Claudia is ready to make an offer. Sit here. Why don't you try out my comfy sofa? Oh, I love it. Flauschy! My little way. guardian angel! Oh he God. always comes by when I'm nervous. Oh, really? And when he feels that I'm anxious about something or upset. Oh, I'm so glad I saw my him! My guardian angel! <laughs> I just have to say, you look so stunning on my furniture. I'm going to have to keep you here for decoration. <laughs> well, I'm quite comfortable, so... <laughs> OK, we've done a lot of work on this. You know, it's not guaranteed that we're actually going to, you know, actually sell the bags because they are so unusual. The secondary market goes for a particular, you know, type of style. The classics sell more than the unique, unfortunately. I think we would be able to make you an offer for all of them as they are for around £3,500. I'm thrilled about that. Oh, good. So that's a yes, then? So that's a solid Yay! yes. Yay! <laughs> I don't know. Brilliant. It actually went a lot better than I expected and anticipated. Give me a hug. Yeah. Oh, I'm actually happy to let them go. I notice they kind of get to me because they bring up other memories to New York. It's just past that life, and I just want to move forward. And um, yeah, I can thus take care a little bit more of my mother's medical costs. So there's always hope. In the East End of London, James is on his way to revisit Tony and Dan's Porsche. Tony's looking to sell the vehicle for 85, 90,000 pounds. It's a hell of a lot of money. It really is so specialised that at this moment in time, I don't know what the thing's worth. That's the truth of the matter. He's arranged to meet up with expert Alex to pin down a value for the bespoke vehicle. Well, wow. it's a nice one, isn't it? What do you think? Beautiful. Yeah. See the interior. Oh, yeah, this is probably done. This is really probably done, this one. James, this is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen, actually. What for you does it? All of the panels are very, very straight. There's no ripples in them. The quality of the paint job is excellent. Custom-made wheels, even to the point where they've gone for the lightweight glass, the roof. So this is a saleable item? Then? Definitely a saleable item. Yeah. You know, and it's probably mad to drive. <laughs> it is quite mad to drive, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Put a smile on my face, I'll tell you. Getting in and out of it at my age was a little bit of a struggle, but uh, I don't know how you'd fare in that respect. You fall in and you fall out of these. That's the yeah, way to do it. Yeah. A bit like love. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'll have a chat with Tony and see if we can get something done. Lovely. Good luck. Cheers. Good Thanks, mate. I now know what I'm dealing with. It's a matter of getting back to the office, making the calls, doing some more work and uh, presenting Tony with options. At £85,000, can James find a quick buyer for this ultimate boys' toy? In the Weybridge branch, Helen is about to make an offer on six bottles of Chateau Lafitte. Wine lover Nigel paid £450 for them in 2001. From what the specialists have said, from when Nigel would have bought the wine, he's definitely made a profit. Their information was that this is now the time to drink this wine and to enjoy it. So whether Nigel was willing to, to not drink it for this price, we'll see when I make the call. I'm looking to get round about £3,000, upwards of £3,000 uh, for the wine. The reason for selling the wine is to help my, my boys through university. Any, every little helps, as they say. Good morning. Hi, 
Nigel, it's Helen. Um, I'm calling regarding the wine. Um, we've done a lot of research. And we've shown it to quite a few buyers. And they said that it was in, you know, the perfect sort of condition. They'd expect to sort of want to buy this good. type of wine. So that's really good. For your particular wine, the 2001 vintage. It's now at its sort of a, a good time to drink the wine. Less of a sort of um, investment piece. We have got a price for you. You can actually purchase the wine now for less than you wanted to, to achieve on the wine. We would be able to offer you £1,700. OK. Well, it's a very kind offer, but I think I'll, I'll decline it this time. Well, listen, thank you very much for all your efforts. You're very welcome, Nigel. If you need anyone to help you get through the wine, you know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. Oh, lovely. OK, take care, Nigel. All right, Helen, thanks. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. I don't know. It's quite a bit less than really what I wanted. Probably a bit ambitious on the three, but had it been another thousand, then I think we could have done a deal. He's made money on the wine. It just unfortunately wasn't the figure that he was looking to get to. But I've still got the wine. I haven't lost anything. I've still got the wine to drink if I choose to drink it. And uh, you never know, the boys might be pleased I didn't get rid of it. In Richmond, Danny is hoping to raise enough money from her jewellery collection to fund her first bodybuilding contest. I want her to be pleased and I want to have a good result for the company, but I don't know what she's expecting, so I don't know how she's going to react to what I've got to say. I'm really nervous, really nervous today. £4,000 is my, my minimum and I don't know if I'm going to be able to sell for that. I need the money for my competitions, it's going to be my first time. I'm going to compete like a bodybuilding competition and it's very expensive. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to work out. I have faith on this. Let's go. Hello. Hi, Danny. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I've gone through everything in quite a lot of detail. It's really unusual. There's loads of really nice pieces here. But they are, for that reason, they are relatively limiting for I the UK it. market. It's not for everyone. There's one piece that stands out in here. This is, this is very saleable in the British market, this pendant. Do you have an idea what the size of the diamond is? I don't know. No. I calculated it to be about two carats. That's good. Yeah, so it's a good size stone. I do have a figure for you. OK. And that figure is six thousand pounds. <laughs> six thousand pounds. That's cool. That's good. That's fantastic. Good. That's good. good. Is good. that going to be enough for you for your yeah, body? Yeah, going to help me a lot. That's going to help a lot. Yes, fantastic. That's it. I'm really pleased to hear New that. New life starts again. Yes. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye, Bye Danny. I feel good because I got the money. Now I can pay my bills and I can go with, through with my competition. I wish her every success with that. She must be very, very disciplined. And I hope that the money goes a long way to helping her achieve that goal. This is it. New life. New chapter of my life. In Hatton Garden, Tony is about to find out if James has sourced a buyer with at least £85,000 for his one-off Porsche. Tony needs £30,000 to kickstart his business. It's uh, not an easy one because it's a bespoke item. I mean, it really is a one-off. I've, I've looked into almost every possibility and uh, I've now got to relay the news back to him. There's always that little bit of anxiety before uh, I get to meet him, but fingers crossed we can uh, have a bit of good news coming away, yeah? You all right, Tony? Hello, mate. How are you, mate? How are you? Mate. Got your green, look like we're at a Dunkirk oh, no. reunion. The, the brothers. <laughs> well, look, I, we had a fantastic day out in it, didn't we, when, we, when I come down? Yeah. And I know we went through, we both realised that we both were a little bit ill. <laughs> so I've been giving that some thought, and I, might, I thought we might get a little bit of discount on group therapy. I don't yes, know how you feel well, about you that. Know. <laughs> there you go. So, okay. Well, look, basically, 
We've gone to work on it, as you know, and we've shown it to a number of people, and they've all been super impressed with it. They've, some of them have come back saying that it's the best one they've seen. A lot of people would like to have the car and to show it to their clients, so that we've got people queuing up for that. Mm -hmm. But as of today, we haven't got a buyer for it. Yep, OK. What we're able to do, if you need to raise cash, um, to, to promote the business or take it forward is we can actually lend you 50 grand against it, secured against the vehicle, and, right. in, it, and we can, in that way, market it for you. So if you were to give us the car, we'd give you the 50,000. Whilst it's with us, we'll put it out there, and I reckon we'll get it sold quite quickly. That's, that fantastic. sounds fantastic. Well, that gives you, you know, it gives you options then, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it'll really help us out and get us off, you know, off and running, the first little steps in it. So, yeah, no, I appreciate it. That sounds fantastic. James, you're a star. Thanks for coming in. Right, Fantastic. Mate. Cheers, mate. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. That went really, really well. I'm really happy with that, and it's going to really help me out. Me and Dan, we're going to be well happy with that, so, yeah, I'm buzzing at the minute. I think it went really well with Tony. I mean, look, he's a smashing fella. Um, you know, I think we're both cut from the same cloth, to be quite honest with you. We've uh, managed to offer him a loan secured against it for £50,000, which I think gets him to where he needs to be. So, yeah, uh, it's winners all round. Thank you.